I see you. Can you hear me all right? I can hear you now. Is, is the microphone good or do I need to switch to another one? No, it sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. It's moving back and forth where it loses it. Okay. All right. So we are good. And we're back, everybody. You timed that perfectly, Bunny. That was just, that was so good. <laughs> Zoology world, it it there there has been a major major breakthrough as we have discovered and do now have in captivity a live basilope. Berkey breathed, or whatever the hell his name is. I think that's how you pronounce it. Was a hundred percent right. Basilope walk among us. No, a basilope. It's half basset hound and half antelope. It's a basilope. Yes. And it's female. Maybe a couple of them, yeah. And shredded cheese. I dig that. Basilope sandwich? No, no. Uh, we're, we're you gonna... are hungry. <laughs> I am. I'm so hungry all of the time. Uh, yeah. And the second fact that you would know about me is that I'm a lover of history. I love it. But I'm also a storyteller. So what I like to do, what we like to do here at this point in the show, is find a story from the history books maybe people don't know too well and reword it by my own unique panache. And that's what this is, another educationally uneducational installment of Steve's Historic Approximation! Dun, 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 dun. Or shaft, as I like to call it, repeatedly, annoyingly, whether anyone wants me to or not. Now, personally, I like the name shaft, and to be clear, that's capital S-H-A, and a lowercase t, S-H-A-P. I want to get specific about this. For all you people playing along at home. Anywho, this week on the old Chappity Shap Chap, we will be talking about the dark and speedy side of Sesame Street and how sometimes the tall tales that kids tell each other are lies with a little bit of truth to them. And let's talk about that first. When you're a kid, you hear things from other kids. Yes. And they're not always right. Sometimes they're wildly far from being right. But when you're a kid, you hear things, rumors, uh, stories about famous people, places, and things. And most of the time, they're total bullshit. When I was a kid in the 80s, the scuttlebutt around the playground was that Ozzy Osbourne bit the head off a live bat at every concert. Ah, at every concert. Every city, every <laughs> Concert everywhere. He just apparently just had like a bucket of bats and just every night. And everyone cheered. He did it every night because he was evil and satanic in his state. Yes. And the most evil thing that you could do in the 80s was sing Stairway to Heaven backwards. Yes. 
still never figure that out, but that was the most evil thing in the world. I guess, yes. A stairway to heaven backwards would be an escalator to hell. Of course this was all of course this was all bullshit, but occasionally the kids got a, a little bit of it right. You know, okay. not all of it. But sometimes the kids in the playground, the scuttlebutt around the playground did have a little bit of truth to it. Here is an example. This it, this is an example from my own life, but I didn't say that. I never said this. I want to make that perfectly clear. I didn't say this. But in 1987, 1988, the boys at school, at the private Catholic school that I went to, what everyone said was, was that Jim Neighbors, yes, a.k.a. Gomer Pyle, he was gay and he died of AIDS. Okay. I didn't say that. That is what they said. The well, our rumor, because because we had that too, but it was Jim Neighbors was gay, and his boyfriend was Richard Chamberlain. Richard Chamberlain. Uh, hold on. Let me let me let me Wikipedia this because um, there was some famous person that he was. Rumored to be with Jim Neighbors. I keep wanting to spell neighbor as an actual neighbor, and I keep effing it up. I keep wanting N E I G H B O R S. Um, a long-standing rumor maintains that Neighbors married actor Rod Hudson and Rock Hudson in the early seventies. Oh, really? Yeah. Like that's weird. But, yeah, apparently he was rumored to be with a bunch of different people. But, okay, so, but what what I heard when I was a kid was that Jim Neighbors was gay and that he died of AIDS in, in 87 and 88. That's what they said. Now, Jim Neighbors didn't die in the 80s. He actually died in 2017. Yes. At the age of 87. Like, wow, I did, that's incredible. But I did not know this. Jim Neighbors was in fact gay, and he married his longtime partner in 2013. Like, good job for you, Homer. Yes. No. Damn. Good love. Good job for you, Muscle Top. Love is love is love. Fucking good. Well, I remember somewhere around 2000, Richard Chamberlain. He was Doctor Kildare. He was in Shogun, Thornbirds. Yeah. My mom was obsessed with Shogun. Yeah. yeah. He, th- there was a long standing rumor about him being gay uh, until somewhere around 2003, 2004, something like that. He had finally, like, officially came out. He had written a book, he had done a talk show circuit, and nobody cared. <laughs> Poor Richard Chamberlain. Yeah, right? I want to get back there. It would be a big deal again. Yeah. I want to get back there. That was fucking awesome. Dang. Oh, so sad. So, so, so what I'm saying is, in the context of the scuttlebutt around the playground, is uh, sometimes the BF kids say to each other, a school does have a hint of truth to it. No, Jim Neighbors didn't die, but he was gay, and I didn't know that, and so, okay, good for him. That brings us to Sesame Street. Okay. Okay. Well, I was also, okay, before going on to Sesame Street, I just want to lay it out that I was also the Pop Rocks and Coke generation. Yes. Okay. Uh, And the Spiders in the Bubble Yum generation. The Spider Egg. I didn't know about the spider and the bubble yum, but I definitely heard that Mikey from the Life commercial died of Pop Rock. Yes. Yes. I definitely heard that when I was a kid. Yeah. This, that, that was our internet. Yeah. Yeah. 
Very much so. Okay, so when I was a kid, one of my favorite Sesame Street characters, live action, one of the things that I've always told people at story times and stuff like that is like, hey, you kids know Elmo? When I was growing up, Elmo didn't exist, and Grover was the Elmo. Yes. Grover was all over the place. He was starring in the books. He was in all these skits. He was a waiter. He was a superhero. And then suddenly Elmo, and then suddenly Elmo comes along, and you barely see Grover. It pisses me off. But um, one of my favorite Sesame Street characters was David. Okay. Which he one was, was he? Cool black guy. He worked at Mr. Hooper's store. And uh, he ran it when Mr. Hooper died. He, he, he took over the store. He was just this cool, fairly young black guy in, in the 70s. Like, he was dating Maria. Okay. And yeah, okay. Broke them up, and Maria went to go date, I think, Louise. Uh, but I had forgotten that David even existed until a long lost piece of lost media appeared. <laughs> and we talked about this in the last episode. In 1978, there was an episode of Sesame Street that played that featured uh, the actress Margaret Hamilton reprising her role as the Wicked Witch of the West. And it it was considered so scary for young kids that they banned it. They took it off of circulation, and it only played once in 1978. It never played again. It was thought to be lost until it randomly popped up like a few weeks ago on Reddit. And so uh, my wife and I watched it together, and it was it's very David-heavy, this episode. David's all over that, and I had forgotten about David from Sesame Street, <coughs> and that brought out a crazy old memory from my childhood that sent me down an insane rabbit hole, and that's what this chap is about. Because, see, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, what people would say, what the kids said, the scuttlebutt around the playground was, that David from Sesame Street went crazy. The police arrested him naked on top of someone's house, naked and yelling, I'm David from Sesame Street. That's what the rumor was that the okay. kids said. That's what the kids said, the rumor. That David from Sesame Street went crazy. He, uh... The police arrested him naked on top of a house, naked and screaming, I'm David from Sesame Street. I had forgotten all about this until I saw this lost Sesame Street episode with Margaret Hamilton. And so finally, after so many years, decades, really, I finally just, oh, that's a really great, uh, I can't believe that this legendary lost media was finally found. Really incredible. And also, uh, David from Sesame Street. He looked really good. I forgot about him. You know what? Whatever did happen to David from Sesame Street, because now that I think about it, the kids at school said something, but, you know, uh, let me look it up. So I uh, contacted, I checked Wikipedia, the free online encyclopedia that anyone can edit, and I looked it up. And you would be surprised at how much what the kids at the playground said was a hundred percent freaking true. Really? Yes. I can't believe this. I shan't believe it. In fact, um, it's such it's so shocking that I didn't I didn't bother writing it out. It, you know, rewording this historical moment in my own unique storytelling style. I, I, I'm just going to read this. Uh, the actor's name is Northern Calloway. That's uh, David's real name. He was on Sesame Street from 1971 to 1989, but in the 80s, they slowly phased him out. So it's surprising that David was still on Sesame Street when Michael Keaton was Batman. You know? Like, that's weird. Like, I, I thought he left in the 80s, but I don't think he left in the 80s. I just think I grew up in the 80s, 
and Chuck yeah. Watson Sesame Street. So he was a stage actor. He was a Broadway stage actor. He was in Pippin. Whose life is it anyway? Tiger at the Gates. In 71, he joined the cast of Sesame Street in the second season. He was the boyfriend of Maria in the lost episode of Sesame Street. Maria's really young. She's like 26 or 27. And, yeah. Uh, she looks amazing. She looks really good. Um, so, okay. Apparently, Northern Calloway, I think he was bipolar. <clears throat> so, uh, here's... Uh, Here's a, the part of his Wikipedia labeled legal troubles, health problems, and final years on Sesame Street. Most of this comes from a book, uh, Street Gang, The Complete History of Sesame Street. So, buckle up, because this is crazy. Okay. On the morning of, Sep on the morning of September 19, 1980, Halloway was arrested in Nashville, Tennessee. He had been a guest in the home of Mary Stagaman, marketing director of the Tennessee Performing Arts Center, after performing there on the 13th of September. Halloway, <coughs> Mary Stagman with an iron, causing serious head and rib injuries. He then fled into the suburbs of Nashville, where he smashed a plate glass window and storm door at one house, and did extensive damage to the interior of another, destroying a family's collection of fine crystal, smashing a television set, and breaking light bulbs with his bare hands. He also stole a backpack from a turf grader, smashed a windshield with a rock, and stole a bag of herbicide from elderly resident Douglas White. Calloway started spilling it on his body and was rolling on the ground and running around, at which point the elderly resident, Douglas Wright, uh, he attempted to hold Calloway at gunpoint, like, you're going insane, I've got a gun, I'm going to hold you here until the police come to get you. So, uh, Douglas Wright, the old guy, fired a warning shot at Calloway, causing Calloway to dive to the ground and screamed that he was shot. He wasn't, but that's what he was screaming. He then jumped up and washed his hands and face in the right bird bath before fleeing the scene where witnesses reported him wearing only a Superman t-shirt. Okay. He was arrested after hiding out in a couple's garage screaming, help, I'm David from Sesame Street and they're trying to kill me. The actor was taken to a mental hospital for examination. The events were never publicized, and Calloway was allowed to continue appearing on Sesame Street as he sought help. Okay. So, throughout the 80s on Sesame Street, they had an actor who got naked and stole the first grader's backpack. Yes. Acting with the first graders. That's crazy. Was Jared on Jared Fogel from Subway ever on Sesame Street? <laughs> Dang. That is crazy. <coughs> and not only is it crazy that that happened to an actor from Sesame Street, but it's also crazy that the, the rumor that the kids used to stay on the playground was pretty fucking spot on. Right? Yeah. I was I was surprised to look up David from Sesame Street and to find out that like oh so for my entire life I was pretty on the nose. So in his authorized history, Street Gang: The Complete History of Sesame Street, author Michael Davis writes that Calloway's final years on the show were marked by periods of deteriorating health and ability punctuated by episodes of erratic behavior. During these years, he cites that Calloway reportedly bit music coordinator Danny Epstein during an onset fight. He also appeared unannounced at Allison Barnett's high school. She played Jean, 
Christina on Sesame Street. I had a crush on her growing up. And proposed to her, which is shocking. She was in high school and was 23 years younger than him. He just okay. randomly appeared and just like in, in a high school cast member's house to try and marry her. Plus, Calloway's fellow cast members observed subtle clues to his sometimes erratic behavior and kept their distance. In addition to this, his criminal record caused him to be banned from Canada where Follow That Bird was filmed, and that's why he's not in the movie. Okay. David's not in Sesame Street, Follow That Bird, because he couldn't get past the border because he got freaking arrested. That's fascinating to me. So, yeah, the writers gradually ended his relationship with Maria, and he started being on the show less and less. Eventually, in the spring of 1989, Calloway was dismissed from Sesame Street. His final appearance was on the 20th season finale. Shortly after his termination from Sesame Street, he was permanently placed in a mental institution in Westchester, New York, where he received, he received treatment for bipolar disorder. And then in January of 1990, there was an altercation between uh, David from Sesame Street and a physician. Uh, he was, he, they got into a fight. He was taken to a memorial hospital where he was found dead. Uh, the coroner's report listed his official cause of death as exhaustive psychosis, now more commonly called excited delirium syndrome, a controversial condition also often retrospectively assigned to those who die under restraint in custody. Oh, my God. If I ever die of excited delirium syndrome, I didn't do it. It was the fucking cop. Yeah. But yeah, David from Sesame Street did, in fact, go nuts, but they touched it up and kept him on Sesame Street. Isn't that crazy? That is insane. That is insane. He was on Sesame Street. When I was a kid, but apparently the guy just, yeah, he 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 went nuts. That's so weird. He, you know, he had a he released an album called David Daydreaming on a Rainy Day. He, he released singles. He released songs. Yeah. He was, in a, he was in the 1973 movie Together for Days. Uh, he was in an episode of the soap opera The. Storm. I I have some people on my Twitter account. Uh, apropos of nothing, I have people on my Twitter account. I am shocked, shocked that so many people out there still watch soap operas and get into them. Really? Yes, I am surprised by this. There are numerous people on my Twitter feed. That just watch every freaking general hospital, and it's like, hold Still. on, let me check. The, yeah, it is 2022. This is fucking weird. It's not the 80s anymore. Luke and Laura aren't a thing, but apparently there's still people that just are really into that. Yeah. I am. I am blown away by this. But yeah, David from Sesame Street, he went nuts. Also, you should see Margaret Hamilton as the Wicked Witch of the West on Sesame Street. It's pretty great. It's really great to, to see a character on Sesame Street threaten Big Bird. Yes. Pretty great. <coughs> it's pretty great to finally see a character roll into Sesame Street and say, hey, I'm going to turn you into a fucking feather duster, you piece of shit. That is 100 yeah. That's probably why they only aired it once. And listen, you fat fuck, she says that to Big Bird. Yeah. It was shocking. <sighs> Very stunning. Very stunning. And then Big Bird is like a, has a bat in one hand and a hockey stick in the other hand. And he's like, next time that bitch comes along, 
I'm going to fuck her up. <laughs> and the weird thing is, I'm pretty much yeah, telling the truth. Where is that bitch? Walking along, Mr. Hooper's store, and this like guarding Mr. Hooper's store. Oh, hey, old lady. Hey, why don't you just come into Hooper's store? You better go in quick because this old bitch is here somewhere. And I've got two weapons. I'm going to fuck her up. That's why they didn't air the episode. A lot of cussing. Surprising. Surprising amount of cussing in the whole episode. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That was a pointer system, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Sang that song with the pinball. Yeah. Oh. You and the pointer brother. They point at everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a deep cut. Before I think you should leave came along. Uh there was a show that I think it only lasted. <laughs> I think it only lasted for one season on Netflix, like so many shows. But it was called The Comedians, and basically they gave, they got a bunch of random comedians and said, okay, you have one half hour on Netflix, do whatever you want. And it was a bunch of comedians that I've never heard of, but I think Nicole Byers had a half hour on it. She was that, she's that uh, one black woman who hosts that, like, cake show. Nailed it, yeah. And then, um... Tim Robinson was given a half hour, and so there's it. It's it. It feels like a like a pilot for I think you should leave. Yeah. Which it probably was, but it's a really great episode, and like there's a lot of people out there that quote I think you should leave, but you can tell the real fans when they're quoting something from one episode of the comedian, because then you know your stuff. You're even more of a fan. If you're quoting one of the skits that he actually got on TV when he was on SNL for one season. <laughs> because his stuff was insane. <coughs> oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, no, absolutely. I'm very exclusionist. You are my niche. You are my niche. It does. It does. It sounds weird. Sounds weird. Sounds weird. Yeah. So David from Sesame Street, he went insane. That is, uh, that's it for Shap this week. I'm working on a couple of other ones. Uh, um, I learned a great, a, a, a great hidden side of the Stonewall riots recently. I should have done that during Pride, but, uh, uh, Oh, and I've got two great reviews for this week's movie, Corona, also known as Fear is a Virus, also known as Yelling Canadians, the movie. Yes. Uh, uh, I got two reviews, and they're really great. And I can't wait to talk about this week's movie. Uh, our next episode, just to let you know, buddy, here's a little bit of a preview. Kevin Nash. I said that last episode. We're finally watching Kevin Nash's uh, coronavirus action film. So, ten minute warning. Okay, good. We can run out the clock. So that is it for Steve's historic approximations. Be sure to join us next time for more educationally uneducational fun with Steve's historic approximations. And cut.